Hello, my name is Tomasz Poszytek. In this video, I would like to again explore the approvals topic. However, this time, uh, I would like to talk about the attachments. So I was inspired by one of the community members who asked me recently, hey, do you know where are the attachments from approvals stored? And I was like, hmm, that's a good question. Let's check it out. So I would like to take you with me into the, onto the journey where I'll show you where the attachments are stored and how you can retrieve them in your Cloudflows or, well, later maybe in your Power Apps so that you can get their values, get their contents and, well, simply work with them. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so here's again my Cloudflow, which is assigning lots of tasks. And I have changed it a little bit because right now it is uh, accepting two attachments, like two files. And so the create and approval is simply uh, getting these, uh, these file contents and file names and uh, is, well, simply attaching these two files to the approval process. So I'll just change um, the title from the file test to file test demo. And well, I'll trigger it. So I had, I had a comment that Files like uh, Office documents, so Word, Excel, PowerPoint, including PDFs, are not stored in Dataverse because I heard that every other type of attachment is actually stored in Dataverse. Well, I was doing lots of tests recently and I personally haven't faced that issue. So in my case, every kind of attachment, every, every extension, like every type of document is actually stored in the same place where I will show you in a second. So if you have different experiences, please let me know and I'll try to explore it even deeper. As of now, let me show you what I found. So anyhow, um, I'll start now with uh, attaching the Word document and I'll attach as well um, that PNG file. Now I'll just run the flow. So the flow now creates an approval. It, uh, it assigns that task to, well, myself and John Researcher. I will switch to John Researcher's email for a second just to show you how this approval looks like right now. So just in a second, I should be, I should be sent an email, um, with that task. So in the meantime, I'll navigate to General Researcher's Teams as well to show you how that approval looks like in Teams. Oh, there it is. So there is a there is an email from Microsoft Teams. Um, and as you can see, all these attachments that I have added to the approval are there present so that the approver doesn't really need to go to the uh, approval itself to see all these attachments. They can directly approve, reject it from here. And so once I switch to, te uh, to the Teams, and then um, I open the approvals application, um, approvals application, um, you'll see, I just possibly need to switch to the right environment, right, so the product environment. And here this task is assigned as well. So, um, well, there is a link, obviously, because there was as well a link, link generated. There are no attachments, right? So in here, I don't have an access to the files. I see who requested. I can see the link, but I don't see the file attachments here. So that is something that I dislike because with that, you don't really, really have, um, you know, the access to the files itself. Nevertheless, nevertheless, this is how this kind of approval looks like. So the files are being sent to, uh, to the approver in email. Um, they can as well see those, um, those files as they navigate to the approval section inside inside uh, Power Automate portal, but for some reason, they don't have access to these files as they navigate to approvals application inside Microsoft Teams. All right, anyhow, um, this is how it looks like. 
Now, let me show you where those files are actually being stored. So what, I, what I've done was to navigate to approvals table and then I looked at the relationships and I was thinking which table from the list of these tables can actually be used for storing documents. Well, so obviously I was looking to those which are in the one to many relationship and the only table that for some reason like rang me a bell was notes, right? So note, in my opinion, was the one that was actually using, um, that was actually being used for storing the attachments. And well, I wasn't wrong. So what I found out is that actually this table is actually used, is being used by many, many tables, many other tables to, uh, to store files inside. So here I was able to find all the attachments that I have sent. And here I have the base 64 encoded contents of each file. Um, I have the file name, I have information about the file size, uh, about when it was created, when it was modified, who is the owner, obviously. And one of the columns which uh, is being used to build this relationship is the column called regarding. And there is a small column called, um, called, um, let me just show you. Well, there is a mime type, so you can use to check the type file, the file type. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not visible here anyhow. So the file type, uh, tells you as well what is this kind of the document. But the column regarding is always empty. And so I was thinking, if this is a lookup, why is it empty? So I went into relationships as well in the notes, in the notes table. And then I realized that the regarding actually is the multi lookup column. So in the same time, it is able to create a lookup at relationship with many other tables. And therefore it's not displaying a value because it's really able to display different goods that are referring to records from various of different tables. So then I was thinking, how can I check if this is actually my row and how can I actually um, like be sure that the regarding in this row is actually looking up my table. So then I went back to columns and what I found out was a column called, um, was a column code object type. And so object type is a lookup that returns information about a table to which the regarding uh, column is actually looking up. So that was my finding. I can't display that column inside um, inside here the, the view of the of the table. However, you can query this table. You can column. You can query this column uh, using using obviously Cloudflows. So, anyways, uh, the second thought was, as I mentioned, how can I be sure that this is the this is the um, row that is looking up my particular approval. So it's looking up the approval with a GUID, with this GUID, right? So let me just copy paste it. So I decided just to open this table, this, this row uh, using form. And then here you do have information about the regarding record, right? So this information here actually displays you the approval and this approval is this one, right? So that is the same value, the B2020 and ending with E42, right? B2020, E42. And then I was actually sure that this is, this is really that record which I am looking for. So with that, I was able to, uh, well, answer myself that question where the attachments are stored and they're actually being stored in notes table. So now the question is, how can you retrieve these records? How you can retrieve these attachments in your custom Cloudflows? Well, knowing already what we know, this is fairly easy. So let's navigate to, um, to solutions. I have created a very simple flow that is called, um, yeah, just let me find it now. Um, I'll just maybe switch to Cloudflows. It might be easier then. 
uh, that is called get approval attachments. And this Cloudflow is triggered, obviously, using this manual trigger, uh, which requires a user to provide the approval ID. And then using the action to list rows, I'm navigating to a table called notes. And then under the advanced options, you will find out that I'm using uh, the old data query to fill the rows to only return those which are having this object ID value. So this internal name you can find out by simply getting data from Dataverse and then, I mean, using the action and then simply looking up what is inside the return body. And then you will find that object ID value internal name of the column and its value must be equal the approval ID. And then what I'm doing as well is to simply sort the return rows using the modified on description. And the last step is to just to be sure that I actually retrieved the information I was looking for um, is to write out or just, just you know, pr print out information about all the files together with the file contents that I was able to retrieve. All right, so um, let's check it if it works. So I'll simply test it. I copy the flows GUID, uh, the approval ID, sorry, the approval GUID. And then it should return all these two attachments. So the docx file, the Word document and the PNG file. Okay, so uh, the action list rows worked fine. And then in the apply to each, yes, there are two records. The first one is the download PNG. So the, uh, so the uh, image that the PNG file that I have attached. And the second one is the test one docs. Uh, so the Word document I have attached as well. And so here we have those information about um, the file. And below is the base64 encoded body. So that if you'd like to, for example, store this document right now in SharePoint or to wherever, send it in your custom email or to upload it to OneDrive, then you have all these contents together with a file name to simply make that happen. And well, that is basically it. So um, this way you're able to actually get information or get data get contents of all the attachments that users are attaching to their approval processes. And um, you can well grab the contents, you can then move, I mean, not move, but recreate uh, these files, for example, on SharePoint or in SharePoint library, or in OneDrive or in any other file storage of your choice. The point is that uh, you're simply able to iterate over the approval process and get all the files which are added to that approval uh, to go with the file names uh, and contents, obviously. So, oh, that's all in that uh, in that in that area. Uh, so, I hope that you will find that very much useful, at least as much as as I found it. And if you have any questions, simply write it down in the comments below the video. And as always, I ask you for a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And well, until the next time, thank you and bye bye.